Ladies and gents, we are back with another budget PC build. And this one's gonna really blow your mind. What if I told you that this PC can run any game in 1080p, high settings, over 144 FPS, and it's only gonna cost you $650? The CPU I went with this time is the Intel Core i3 12100F. It's a quad core, eight threaded processor with four performance cores which makes this the better choice compared to its direct competitor, the Ryzen 5 5500, which comes in at $100. So not only do you get a slightly faster gaming CPU, but it's also gonna cost you $12 less. It's also not that much slower compared to the newer 13100 when you pair it with a low-end card, which is what we're doing in this build. So if gaming is your main focus, then the i3-12100F is what you want. But if you're into streaming and or content creation, then the extra two cores and four threads from the Ryzen 5 5500 will be of more use to you. If that's the route you wanna take, I'll drop a link to the motherboard that you can pair with the CPU down below. For the operating system, we are going with Windows 10 Pro once again for only $15. I did pick up the key from yourcdkey.com, which is where I get all the keys for these budget builds. It only costs 15 bucks and it's included in the total cost of this entire build. It doesn't matter where you get the keys from, but if you do pick one up from yourcdkey.com, you can get 25% off the order by using the code TS20. Once they send you the code within a minute, just make sure to go into your Windows activation settings to put in the code to remove the nasty watermark. Memory is very important when it comes to building a PC and sadly it's often overlooked. Most people get distracted by the shiny heatsink and the frequency, but don't really look into the CL timing which is equally as important. A 3200 MHz memory with CL14 will be faster than a 3600 MHz CL18. It's always recommended to meet in the middle with the highest frequency and the lowest CL timing that you can afford in your budget. Now for this build, I went with the Pinnacle from Timetech. It's a 3200 MHz kit with CL16 timing. But more importantly, these sticks are compatible with our motherboard, meaning I was able to overclock the frequency by enabling XMP in the BIOS to make sure that the sticks are running at its full speed. You can check yourself right now to see if your memory is running at its max speed. Just right click on your taskbar, click on a task manager, then go into the performance tab and click on memory. If the speed on here doesn't match the speed of your memory, then you are losing out on performance. Here's how to enable XMP. Restart your PC and hit the delete key on your keyboard until you are in your BIOS. Navigate to the overclock or tweaker tab and find your DRAM timing configuration and just enable the extreme memory profile. It's that simple. After that, hit F10 to save your changes and restart your system. As you can see, we are now running the max speed on our memory. For the motherboard, I went with the ASRock B660M Pro RS as it offers a ton of features for the price. Very similar to the motherboard I used in the AMD build last month. We got four DIMM slots, which is awesome if you wanna expand and add two more sticks later down the line. You also get two M.2 slots and one more M.2 for a Wi-Fi card. So you can pick up a Wi-Fi adapter on Amazon for an extra $20 if you wanna add Wi-Fi to your PC. Now without this, you're gonna have to either plug in directly into the ethernet port in the wall or buy a USB Wi-Fi adapter to connect wirelessly. On top of that, the motherboard also has a ton of support for RGB, supplying three, five volt three pin headers and a single 12 volt four pin header so you can plug in all of your RGB products. It also supports 12th gen and 13th gen Intel processors without having to flash the BIOS. And lastly, I did remove the VRM heat sinks and I painted them in white along with the M.2 cover, just so we stay more consistent with the color scheme. And honestly, I think they came out looking amazing. For the graphics card, it was a very easy choice. It was either gonna be between the RX 6650 XT or the brand new AMD RX 7600, which are both very similar in performance when looking at a 10 game average. Both have eight gigs of VRAM, except the 6650 XT is about $10 less if you're looking at the cheapest RX 6650 XT. But ultimately, I did choose the RX 7600 over the RX 6650 XT because of DisplayPort 2.1 support, as well as AV1 encoding. And if you're a streamer, then you know how important that feature is. It is far more efficient than H.264. I did paint the cooler, some parts of the motherboard, and the graphics card once again to match the white color scheme. But I won't go over the entire process in this video 
because I already showed you guys how to do it in the last PC video. So if you want to know how to paint your PC parts the right way, I encourage you to go check out the $800 PC build that I uploaded on the channel. You can either click on the bubble on the top right or click the link in the description section to check it out. For storage, we are keeping it simple once again by going with a crucial T3 plus one terabyte M.2 SSD drive to take advantage of PCI Gen 4 speeds since we are using a PCI Gen 4 motherboard. It's a complete waste not to use a Gen 4 SSD in your PC if you have support for it. It's like driving a Lamborghini in LA traffic. You got all this speed, but unfortunately you can't even take advantage of it. Okay, let's talk about the case. So this is the DIY PC Q3, and it looks very similar to the Kettier's case that I used in the last budget build but it's not. This is also an O11 mini copy, but the main difference between this and the Kettier is that it comes with only three pre-installed fans instead of seven, and that you can't control the speed of the fans like you could on the Kettier. They are all daisy chained with a Molex connector. This means the fan speed is always maxed out regardless if the system is idling or on load. Aside from that, it's a very nice alternative to the same case I used in the last build. You get two tempered glass panels, three USB ports on the top and a hard drive cage in the back that supports up to two drives. I would still recommend going with the Kettier case from the last build because you just get a better quality case and more value for the money. But the biggest selling point is the fan control. You can use the remote to adjust the fan speed, which is awesome. The only downside, it's sold out. Um, it actually sold out within an hour of launching the video. I don't know if they just had low stock or you guys really jumped on the awesome deal. But either way, I'll drop a link to that case down below in case they do have it back in stock. Powering everything is a 600 watt power supply from Apivia. Once again, I just love using the power supplies. This is the third PC I've built using the power supplies and I'll continue to put them in my budget builds because they offer the best value. Only $34 for a 600 watt power supply is just too hard to pass up. Unfortunately, it is a non-modular power supply and it comes with ugly ketchup and mustard cables, but luckily there is a solution to that by going with PSU cable extensions. The ABN01 makes a return again with these clean white on white connectors and cable combs. I have yet to find a better set of cable extensions on Amazon that go with pretty much any color scheme. The total cost of the PC came out to $650.43 at the time of making this video. And with that all out of the way, let's see what this baby can do.
What can I say guys? Another amazing budget build with incredible performance for the money. If you saw this PC online without looking at the price tag, there is no way you would assume this cost less than $1,000, let alone 650 bucks, all brand new parts too. It pretty much handled every game I threw at it in high settings over 100 FPS at the bare minimum, with the exception of Cyberpunk of course since that game eats GPUs for breakfast. Temps were incredible too, even with painting the parts, we were seeing some very cool temps from both the CPU and the GPU. The hottest the processor got was 66 degrees in Apex Legends, and the GPU peaked at 72 degrees. And those are just the hottest recorded temps. In most games, both the CPU and the GPU actually stayed under 70 degrees, which is really nice since we're using only the stock cooler. The only thing I hate about this build is the case. The fact that it comes with three pre-installed RGB fans is nice, but not having fan control is just terrible. They're always running max speed, and as a result, the PC sounds like a jet engine, regardless if you're gaming or browsing the web. If you guys really like this PC and you want to build one yourself, I'll drop a link to a full detailed step-by-step -step build guide that will show you how to build a PC. And you can use that video for any PC you want to build, including this one. I would also highly, highly recommend replacing the fans if you guys have a little bit of extra money. The only thing you can control are the RGB lights from the fans, but it doesn't come with a remote. You'll need to download the motherboard's RGB software instead. Since I'm using an ASRock board, I downloaded Polychrome and with it I was able to change the colors easily. All in all, it's still a fantastic build for the money. You got performance and aesthetics in a nice compact package. I'll drop a link to all the parts I used in the description section down below. As always, let me know in the comment section what budget I should focus on in the next budget build. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe for more awesome PC content coming your way, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.